All right, all right, and welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Teresa, and this video, we count down the top 10 messed up punishments from the Qin Dynasty. Crime in China was viewed as a tipping of the cosmic order out of balance. Punishment was meant to bring the order back into balance. Chinese law outlined five punishments, or wuxing, calibrated to fit the crime. So we'll start with punishment one, tattooing. You may have seen our video, the top 10 messed up punishments from the Tokugawa era, in which case tattoos as punishment may sound familiar. While Japan and China were on different wavelengths and doing their own things, this is something they had in common for criminals. Although tattooing has been known in China for centuries, it has been in the most part an uncommon practice outside of their indigenous peoples. Throughout Chinese history, tattooing has been seen as a defamation of the body, something undesirable, and this originates likely with the penal tattooing as one of the five capital punishments in ancient China. The first, and considered the lightest of the five punishments, had criminals' upper cheeks or forehead or other visible parts the body tatted up. It was usually words that described their misdemeanors or the location of their exile or name of their hard labor camp. These tattoos are obviously permanent and very visibly marked out their bearers as ex-criminals for life. Even should the criminal ever return from exile, the tattoo would mark them as what they were. The Kinlaw Code covered so many offenses that common people frequently did not realize they had committed a crime until they'd been arrested. So you really could be just minding your business one day and boom, face tat the next. Next is amputations. So after tattoos, the next was rhinotomy, aka the snip snip of a criminal's nose. Like tattooing, it left the victim scarred for life. But because sharp items and blood were involved, rhinotomy and the next two penalties following after often resulted in death, even if not their intention, just due to things like bleeding out or infections. Then level three is amputation of feet, aka you. Modern day scientists have been examining a skeleton that was found from 3,000 years ago where the foot of a woman was cut off as punishment for committing a criminal act. Various clues hint that the woman's foot was cut off as a U. Her bones show no signs of any disease that could have made such an amputation necessary, and it seems that the injury was roughly made, rather than with the precision of a medical amputation. There were variations in punishments in different periods where the choice of foot removed depended on the severity of the crimes committed. Amputation of the right foot for a very serious crime, and the left for lighter offenses. It would seem that the woman who was determined to be in her early 30s when she died, had committed the former. There is extensive historical evidence of the practice of the third punishment, such as documents of a Chinese official in the millennium BC complaining about the demand to find special shoes for their amputee people. Remove the reproductives, called gong, the permanent removal of a person's reproductive function. Male victims of this punishment were castrated, losing the member as well as their boys. A very famous casualty it was Sima Qian, a Namaste father of traditional Chinese history writing. Gong punishments for female victims were harder as in the older times they didn't really know what was going on all up in there or how to access it. So it might have involved pounding a woman's abdomen with a stout stick to introduce some kind of damage to the womb. Call that waka womb I guess? But um, no? No, all right. Then the final in the code, the last of the five punishments was death, obviously. However, there were different variations of death, from simple strangulation or decapitation to boiling or grilling a person alive and making literal mincemeat out of a person's flesh and then salting it. They got gorgeous with it, guys. The cruelty was deliberate and designed to cause maximum pain to the victims and their families, as well as to shock and deter others from committing similar crimes. A criminal might be sentenced to death by strangulation if less punitive, or decapitation if more punitive. Strangulation was actually prescribed sentence for lesser crimes, lodging an accusation against one's parents or grandparents, scheming to kidnap a person and sell them, opening a coffin while desecrating a tomb. Decapitation was a method of execution prescribed for more serious crimes such as treason or sedition. Despite a great discomfort involved, most of the Chinese people actually preferred strangulation to decapitation in the ancient times. And this is the result of the traditional belief that the body is a gift from the parents and that it is therefore disrespectful to one's ancestors to die without returning one's body to the grave intact. Executions were usually carried out at 11.30 a.m. On the day of the execution, the convict would be carted from the jail cell to the execution grounds. The cart stopped at a wine shop named the Broken Bowl on the east side of the Zuanwu Gate, where the convict would be offered a bowl of rice wine. The bowl would be smashed after it was drunk, opa, and then her head's chopped off and promptly sent to the emperor.
Now finished with the five official punishments, let's check out some other whores, like the kangu, a type of large wooden collar placed around the necks of offenders, which could weigh differently depending on the severity of their crimes. Speaking of which, the Chinese Empire really said, and we have the receipts for it too, guys, as the criminal's past crimes would be attached to the wooden collar most of the time for the public to see, grocery list style. The kangu also restricted a person's movements, so it was common for people wearing kangus to start starved to death as they were unable to feed themselves and sometimes not even move from one place. If people were generous enough to offer food to the roadside kangu wearers, they could also see the list of their crimes and determine based off of that if they deserved their generosity at all. After all, it was a device used for public humiliation and corporal punishment. Imagine seeing someone you've beefed with forever pop up one day on the street corner wearing one of these. You can just walk up and read everything they did wrong, just attach to them. That's satisfaction for a grudge holder. Older man. Stand your ground until you can't anymore, the neck tower. This torture and execution was done in two ways, either in a tall narrow tower or in a tall wooden frame box. Either way, both tower or box could open only from the bottom side. A prisoner is put inside the wooden box frame or tower with only the neck protruding. Hands and feet would be shackled inside and only a towering pile of stones would be in there to stand on. However, each day, a stone or two is removed dropping the prisoner lower and lower and lower by inches over the days, letting them die slowly by strangulation. Battle of the sexes with this torture, it's Zanzi, a form of crushing torture used to extract confessions or as a penalization for laws broken. Now may be a fun time to mention that the five laws of punishment I had just counted for you guys, those punishments actually only apply to men. For women, the five punishments are a different set and far less severe. First is grinding grain, second is the Zanzi, which you're about to learn about, third punishment is beating, fourth is confinement, but also sometimes as mentioned she got her womb smacked about a little, and finally five, permission to take your own life. Not them killing you or telling you to do, no 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 no. This was some like side eye, well we're not telling you what to do, but you know what's up, dot 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 type of thing. Anyways, the Zanzi. This finger crusher was a Chinese instrument of torture consisting of small sticks strung together with cords which was then placed around the fingers and gradually pulled causing agonizing pain inwards. Think being tricked into playing knuckle breaker by your older brother for the first time. Under traditional Chinese law, a person could not be convicted of a crime unless they confessed. The Zanzi was a legal and non-lethal torture method for forcing women to confess and for men there was a similar and more painful Jiagun ankle crusher, which uses three yard long wooden planks that slowly pulled and compressed the feet in an excruciating fashion that both broke tendon and bone. Time to snap match that waist ancient china style, the waist chop. Waist chopping first appeared in the Zhou dynasty and sadly no, it was not truly a plastic surgery alternative to get that slim thick summer look going. In reality it's when a prisoner is tied to a table, whether lengthwise or widthwise, it doesn't matter, however it's definitely far less comfortable to be chopped in half while also awkwardly dangling your arms and legs off of a table. Anyways, lying face down, the executioner was to try, try being the key word to sever the person in half using a large fodder knife at the small of the back. These big ass knives were literally so heavy it was more like teetering forward and letting the blade kind of slam into the person and hoping for the best. Sometimes, most times, the chopping was not limited to one blow. A story from 1734 describes Yu Hong Tu, the education administrator of Henan, was sentenced to a waist chop. After being cut into at the waist, he remained alive long enough to write the Chinese character Chen, which means cruel, seven times with his own blood before dying. After hearing this, the young Zheng Emperor abolished this form of execution. I guess maybe after learning what happened to Hong Tu, the Emperor felt like half the man he used to be too. Huh? Yeah. We've heard it, we've heard of it before, we'll hear of it again, it's Ling Chi, aka slow slicing, a regular torture and execution to reoccur in bumblebee videos due to how far spread this torture traveled, how much it was used, and just how overall disturbing it is. Slow slicing, also known as death by a thousand cuts, was a form of torture and execution used in China from roughly 900 CE up until the practice ended around the early 1900s. The process involved tying the condemned prisoner to a wooden frame, usually in a public 
took place. The flesh was then cut from the body in multiple slices in a process that was not specified in detail in Chinese law and therefore likely varied per empire or century. Generally it consists of cuts to the arms, then the legs and chest leading to the amputation of the limbs, followed by decapitation or a stab to the heart. If the criminal was less serious or the uh, executioner more merciful, the first cut would be to the throat. The punishment worked on three levels, as a form of public humiliation, as a slow and lingering death, and as a punishment after death. To be cut into pieces meant that the body of the victim was not whole in the spiritual life after death, which is massively consequential to many Chinese people who believed reincarnation required being whole in death. It is described as a fast process lasting no longer than 15 to 20 minutes. The coup de grace was all the more certain when the family could afford a bribe to have the stab to the heart inflicted first. Some emperors ordered three days of cutting, while others may have ordered specific tortures before the execution for a longer execution. For example, records show that during Yan Chohan's execution, Yan was heard shouting for a half a day before his death. And finally, the nine degrees of punishment are ten shades of effed up. In the words of Mulan's Mushu, all right, that's it. Dishonor, dishonor on your whole family. Make a note of this. Dishonor on you. Dishonor on your cow. Well, the Qin Dynasty and a few others of China really felt this sentiment with their whole chest, and it shows in the creation of the nine degrees. See, the punishment involved the execution of close and extended family members. These included the criminal's living parents, the criminal's living grandparents, any children the criminal may have over a certain age, which varied depending on the time period and who was in control and what their definition of a child even was. Also siblings and siblings-in-laws, uncles of the criminal as well as their spouses, and of course the criminal himself. Imagine messing up so bad your whole family line just gets annihilated. We all have that cousin or sibling who would have screwed all of us by now if this still happened. A famous documentation of the Nine Degrees is the story of Fang, a Confucian scholar famous for his loyalty to the Emperor Zhao En. When the Emperor is absurd and Fang is asked by the new one to write an inaugural address, well, Fang refuses. It's also ancient China, so realistically he knows exactly what refusal means, so that proves how metal his decision was. Even when threatened with family extermination, Fang showed his IDGAF attitude and is reported saying, never mind, nine agnates, go ahead with ten. Blowing steam out the ears, the emperor says, bet. And so Fang becomes perhaps the only case of extermination of ten agnates in the history of China. So quite literally, in addition to his own execution, the blood relations from all nine branches of his family hierarchy were killed. And as a kick to the nuts, his students and peers were added to be the tenth group. Random people unrelated to him who just happened to attend his lectures or work with the guy. Although altogether 873 people are said to have been executed. Because this guy refused to write a speech and when threatened said, do it bro, I dare you. Before death, Fang was forced to watch his brother's execution and then Fang himself was executed by waist cutting. And legend goes that prior to his death, he dipped his finger in his own blood and wrote on the ground the Chinese character Quan, which means upsurper. Man was petty until the end and took 873 people with him to prove it. Also, they liked writing in blood a lot. Anywho, we are at the end of another video. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you guys enjoyed learning about some abroad butchery. Be sure to like and subscribe to see more Bumblebee content, and comment down below what tortures you think were likely the most efficient.